good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's a great day in uh, Baton Rouge, and I'm really delighted to be here this afternoon to speak. Before I get started, I'd like to introduce the business leaders who will also be speaking today on behalf of the MOVE EBR plan. Today you will hear from Jennifer Dumphy with Exxon Mobil, Preston Castile with Taylor Porter, Susie Saunier with the Hospital District, Edgardo Tenario with the Baton Rouge General, and lastly, Jim Bernhard with Bernhard Capital Partners. We're also joined in the audience today by a number of business leaders and citizens from across the community, but we have individuals who are here from Crisis and BRAC who are here to show their support for the plan. I also want to let you know that we have had a broad cross-section of bipartisan support for MOVE EBR, which is a big plus. We've recently also been endorsed by organizations including the Greater Baton Rouge AFL-CIO, the GBR Industry Alliance, the Baton Rouge Growth Coalition, and from the mayors of Baker, Central, and Zachary. And of course, we're here today because there's no doubt that everyone agrees that Baton Rouge traffic has reached a point of crucial mass, of critical mass. Our citizens can no longer tolerate the extreme congestion and time delays that have steadily increased year after year. And so as we continue to experience job and population growth, it is crucial that our infrastructure moves forward. Our business community realizes that traffic is a significant quality of place issue and a robust infrastructure is an asset in both economic development as well as talent attraction and retention efforts. And so the MOVE EBR plan, which we have been um, going around the community discussing for months, will invest $912 million to improve infrastructure and traffic in East Baton Rouge Parish through a half cent sales tax. Of course, this will be the largest infrastructure mobility enhancement and traffic mitigation program in our parish's history. That's a good thing. MOVE EBR will provide a value of more than three times the program's cost. And if voters approve it on December 8th, it will be a major step forward in solving our traffic problems and positioning East Baton Rouge Parish for substantial growth. Through a sales tax, the cost of our road improvements is shared with everyone who does business in Baton Rouge. In fact, approximately 21% of the planned revenues will be generated by those who live outside the parish. The tax is proposed for 30 years, and of course the reason is uh, that we can get bond projects out over an extended period of time, much like our own home mortgages. And so this will also expedite projects and give drivers relief in the short term. The first projects will begin within 12 months of the tax being levied and we anticipate completion of the majority of the projects within 12 to 15 years. But at the bottom line, what it's really about is the quality of life for the citizens in this city and parish. We want to give people their most valuable commodity back, and that's their time. I want to reiterate as I close that the funds collected through MOVE EBR cannot and will not, cannot and will not be used for anything other than the projects on this list. My administration, nor any other administration that follows me, will be able to switch out any of these projects. And it is illegal to move funds to do anything other than the pre-approved project list. You know, the job of mayor isn't about just governing for today. It's about governing for 10 to 20, 30 years, and even 50 years down the road. This plan sets up, uh, this plan, excuse me, sets us up 
for future success and growth as a city and parish. And that's why we have a tremendous amount of support for this plan from business leaders and community leaders and residents from every corner of this parish. And we hope that you will help us get out the vote. We need residents to go back to the polls one more time to voice their support for the parish-wide capital improvements district or move EBR. Early voting, of course, is going on now through Saturday and Election Day is December 8th. I'm now going to turn it over to Jennifer Dunphy with Exxon, and at the end, we'll be glad to entertain your questions. Jennifer. Thank you, Mayor Boom. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Dunphy, and I am the process manager at the ExxonMobil Baton Rouge Chemical Plant. And I'm proud today to be here to support Mayor Broom and the support of Move BR. As I think you are aware, our industry is growing. The petrochemical industry is growing significantly. And ExxonMobil plans in the future to invest over $20 billion in the Gulf Coast. And we want that investment right here in Louisiana, and especially right here in Baton Rouge. But for that to happen, one of the factors that they look at when they make investment decisions is infrastructure. And in order to get that development, to see that investment here in Baton Rouge, we need to improve our infrastructure. ExxonMobil has been a founding member of Crisis. It's a coalition that's been working for many years to look at in, in infrastructure improvement. And we believe this effort that the mayor has put forward and move BR will lead us in that right direction. So I thank you. I thank you for the support and hope that we will continue to work with the mayor and work for ways to, to improve our infrastructure here in Baton Rouge so we can see that development for our industry and all of um, ExxonMobil. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Preston Castile, and let me first begin by uh, congratulating and saluting the mayor and her administration on this very bold initiative. Uh, you've heard lots in terms of data and statistics, and you'll hear a lot more in the future in terms of why this is such an important proposition for our community. You know, I practice law in this city, but I wear lots of different hats. And so I drove in this morning to downtown Baton Rouge from, from my home in River Bend. And one of the things I noticed was a whole bunch of school buses uh, near my building uh, connected with the Mentorship Academy. And I thought about how uh, this was going to impact not only the business community, but the education community. Because when you dig deep into that, those buses are traveling all across our city and all across our parish. That's affecting the bottom line of those schools, not only the Mentorship Academy, but every other public school and private school in our city. You know, one of the incredible data points that's on this particular board here is the amount of time that we spend in traveling Traffic. You know, what should take 10 minutes to get somewhere it takes us 28 minutes to get across town. You know, this plan is going to allow us to get in and out of downtown Baton Rouge from other parts of the city within 15 minutes that we couldn't reach before. For me as a lawyer, that means that business and industry will grow. That means economic will, development will improve. That will be more business, frankly, for me personally as a professional in this community. You know, I've taught uh, at both the LSU Law School and the Southern University Law School, and I started teaching at Southern uh, about 17 years ago, and I would drive from downtown Baton Rouge in the afternoon, uh, headed to Southern University, and I would spend so much time at that intersection at Harding and uh, I-110. And the amount of time that was lost at four and five light cycles just to get to that destination, only to get to class and often see students that were also late because they couldn't get across town. Southern later opened a, an evening program, and likewise, they were then attracting students from all across the state to come, but they likewise felt the burden of traffic problems. I later started teaching at LSU, thinking maybe it'll be better getting from downtown to LSU. My classes were three and four o'clock in the afternoon. What would take, again, only about 10 minutes would take 20 and 30 minutes just to get to LSU from downtown Baton Rouge. When I look at, I, you know, this weekend I had a great time digging into uh, the maps and, and what was going to be improved in this plan. And if you get real geeky and wonky about it, you really have a good time 
because you see all of these areas all across the city, North Baton Rouge, South Baton Rouge, and I have a client in Central that always gets stuck and we always flip a coin because no one wants to go out to that particular uh, client during the middle of the day only because of the traffic issues. And they don't want to come to us because of traffic issues. I hear these stories and I've heard these stories all across the city for years and years if we can improve our traffic situation we can improve economic development so mayor I will tell you that it is, it is incredibly delightful to see that we have this opportunity to improve our city in this incredible way you know some will say well this is not the absolute best plan we don't want perfection, uh, greatness to be the enemy of what can be a really good thing. And this is a good thing for our city, and I think that our children for years to come will enjoy it. I think that, and I heard uh, Jeff Kuhn say that, you know, as a tax lawyer, you can't believe that he's supporting a tax plan like this, but he didn't see this as an expense, but rather he saw this as an investment in our community. And it's such a few dollars, in fact, it's only a half cent, when you think about the investment and the potential return on investment for our community. Again, Mayor, congratulations to the business community. I look forward to joining all of you uh, in voting for this particular plan. So Susie Sonia, you're up next. Good morning, everyone. I'm Susie Sonia, the Executive Director of the Baton Rouge Health District. And I'm here today on behalf of Health District Partners to express our support for MOVE BEBR. Our health care partners include the Baton Rouge General, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Louisiana, Our Lady of the Lake, Mary Bird Perkins, Pennington Biomedical Research Center, Oshner Medical Center, and Woman's Hospital. And we all understand the critical importance of this initiative. While MOVE VBR is absolutely about traffic mitigation and economic development, as you've heard today, it is also about health. The Health District is working collaboratively with health care providers throughout the community to ensure that people are provided with the best possible health care, and MOVE VBR is critical to our success. Whether you're facing an emergency and need to get to one of our emergency rooms as soon as possible, if your wife goes into labor and you need to get her quickly to one of our labor and delivery facilities, or as I face personally, you have a child who is in immediate need of health care assistance. The last thing you want is to be stuck in traffic. We know that minutes do matter in emergency situations and having multiple points of access into the health district and into our network of health care providers throughout the community are important. Move B EBR will reduce emergency response times for EMS, fire, and police by improving congestion. Our hospitals who receive those patients see more than 307,000 emergency room patients annually and deliver more than 11,000 babies. We know it will reduce traffic for the more than 1 million patients who go to our facilities each year and their families and the nearly 17,000 employees that are also impacted by these areas. Today more than 55,000 drivers um, use Essen Lane between Perkins Road and the interstate and more than 42,000 drivers traverse a similar section on Blue Bonnet. The, the, uh, Projects in this movie VR initiative will impact that area, but also throughout the greater community, providing easier access for, with synchronization of traffic signals and uh, road improvements and infrastructures throughout the community. And not only that, I just have to take a moment to mention the, the health uh, benefits that are also included with new sidewalks and capacity that give people the opportunity to move around, um, to get out, whether it's for their own wellness or whether it is to get to work. Um, we know that that too is going to help help us as a community improve our health outcomes. And so I thank you, Mayor Broom, for bringing this important initiative. I thank each of you uh, that are here today, and I ask all of you to join us in supporting the initiative on November 8th. And I'd like to introduce Edgardo Tenriro, the CEO of the Baton Rouge General and one of our Health District Board members. Thank you, Susie. Um, you know, one of the things I've learned uh, since I moved to Baton Rouge is that uh, there are a handful of topics that if, you, uh, that if you're wondering within a group uh, whether you can talk about or not and whether you're gonna have time to talk and whether you're gonna have an excite exciting time talking, you can always talk about football, especially LSU football, or, or if that fails, you can talk about traffic. And, uh, and that's, uh, that second topic is, is, is really sad uh, you know, for me and for all of us at the Health District. Uh, the press, uh, you all have, have uh, written the articles, you've read the studies, 
uh, you've talked to the residents, and I'm not breaking any any uh, any uh, news here by simply saying that traffic in Baton Rouge is a problem, and it's a problem that we experience in ways that uh, other cities uh, that are much larger than we are uh, don't uh, don't don't experience, and that's because those large cities have an alternative, have alternative transportation modes to uh, to the car. Here in, in Baton Rouge, we're primarily dependent on driving to get to our churches, to get to our hospitals, to get to schools, to get to our employment uh, uh, locations, to get to the LSU uh, uh, football uh, uh, field. And, uh, and we need to get to the point where those alternatives are available, uh, available to us. So I'm here not just representing the Baton Rouge General, I'm here representing the health district and all of the providers, the hospitals and, and, and medical providers, but I'm also representing uh, the Chamber of Commerce and I chair a committee called Quality of Place that we're really, really excited about that is really taking a long-term view of how we can make Baton Rouge the city that we all want and, uh, and desire. Um, you know, right now, Time is of the essence. Uh, and if you think about what happens uh, when you have a heart attack or when you have a stroke, uh, they say that minute matters. It matters to your brain if you're having a stroke and it matters to your heart muscle if you're having a, uh, if you're having a heart attack. And it's unfortunate that you have to wait uh, in traffic or the ambulance have to wait in traffic in order to get you to the, uh, to the healthcare uh, provider of your, of your choice. Um, the only way that we're going to begin that we're going to begin to build the Baton Rouge that we all desire um, is to invest in the infrastructure improvement uh, improvements that Move uh, EBR uh, provides. That is the the way uh, the way to go. You know there are a lot of projects in, projects in the uh, that from Move uh, EBR that will be located near or around the health district. Uh, in fact, there are nearly uh, $200 million worth of improvements uh, that will benefit every single citizen of this community for, uh, for decades to come. Uh, I'm going to mention three, uh, not to get too wonkish on it, but I think it's important for you all to recognize what these projects are. And yes, they're not perfect, not everything is perfect, but we can't let perfection, again, get in the way of, uh, of, uh, of improvement. So here are three things that are going to happen. First off, we're going to have the Dijon extension. That is a parallel road that is going to connect Blue Bonnet uh, with, uh, with Essence parallel to the, to, the, uh, to the interstate. And right now, all of the traffic that tries to communicate between those two roads is going through the core of the health district through primarily one road at the end because it's a, it's a funnel. Uh, and that is, uh, that is Picardy and Blue Bonnet. That intersection of Picardy and Blue Bonnet as the health district grows is gonna become a major, major uh, uh, problem for the, uh, for the city in terms of accessing, uh, accessing care. So that, that extension is, is, is essential. Right now, it's gonna be built only halfway through and this, uh, uh, this tax is gonna fund the extension of that road all the way through from the Children's Hospital to, uh, uh, to Blue Bonnet. Uh, a second uh, uh, road in that program is going to be the, um, uh, uh, the what we call Midway. It's going to be a parallel alternative to Blue Bonnet on one side and to Essen on the other that is going to connect us all the way down to Perkins. So imagine now these two major roads, uh, Essen and Blue Bonnet, with a third alternative in the middle. I think that's going to really, really uh, improve the ability of all of you to get to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to the hospitals. And then finally, there are going to be major improvements funded for, uh, for Blue Bonnet, which includes sidewalks, it includes bikeways, in fact, it includes a connection, a way to connect the health district to the Breck uh, 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 bikeway uh, that, is being, uh, that is being built. So um, I, for one, uh, don't like uh, increases in, in, in taxes. But I think that the only way in which we're going to be able to build the type of city that, uh, that we want for ourselves and for our children and for our grandchildren is to, is to support this tax. And I'm, I'm tired of talking about traffic uh, at, uh, at, uh, with my friends, uh, family, and, and others. And I want to do something about it. And that's why I'm personally committed to support this, uh, this initiative and why we're doing a lot of work inside uh, our hospitals uh, to let our employees know 
and the families or employees that voting for this tax is good not just for the health district, uh, but also for this uh, for this community. So thank you again for your uh, for your um, uh, for listening uh, to my perspective. And now I'd like to ask Jim to uh, to come up here, Jim Bernhardt, uh, and speak uh, uh, frankly about what he feels and how he feels about this uh, uh, this tax. I am certain that it will be quite uh, quite entertaining. Thank you. I'm the entertainment part, huh? Okay, guys. Um, Thank you for you for welcoming me to speak to our condolences or whatever. It's being recorded, right? All right. You know, I first was going to do a little tongue in cheek here, kind of David Letterman's top 10 things while, you know, while we call it the new bridge, every day's game day traffic, et cetera. But then I realized, you know, I wasn't going to do that. It's too important. What I do now is, and a lot of y'all know me from Shaw, but we're in the private equity business. We invest in communities across America. Um, we've invested a billion and a half dollars. A lot of it's been in Baton Rouge. We've invested more money in the city of Baton Rouge than any company, including Exxon, in the last three to four years. We've created 5,000 new jobs. We have 18,000 employees. We own companies like Brown and Root and Epic and Bernhardt Energies. Two of them will be Fortune 1000 companies in the next 36 months. We plan on investing over $5 billion, and we'd like some to be in Baton Rouge. It's difficult for us to attract industry without infrastructure and education. Now, I assure you, best my knowledge and belief, I have created more jobs in this city than anybody that would come in front of this mic or whose has existed. Thousands of jobs. We hope to create another 50,000 jobs in the next five to six years. Hopefully, a lot of them will be here. We cannot do it without some ability to attract young people with education and a decent infrastructure. We cannot do it. Look, guys, look. Everyone here has a car, right? We know we've got to do something. Now, there are going to be people out there that are going to say, oh, well, we should have done this or we should have done that. Well, why don't they speak up for the last few years and say, let's do this, okay? Because this is not a perfect plan. It is a good plan. But we cannot do a perfect plan because there is no such thing, okay? We try to moderate the tax. I assure you, the last person who wants to pay more taxes is me. Unless Exxon does. Where? Where? Exxon. You can volunteer there. Okay. All right. So, look, you know, we knew the path moving forward is to fix our infrastructure. When I spoke a year ago to the Baton Rouge Business Report annual meeting, I said I was going to try to do three things. One, myself and one of the big Republicans, so they couldn't say it was Republican or Democrat, myself and Mike Wampo. We're going to try to reduce the murder rate in Baton Rouge, and I believe we're going to be successful on that. It was 107 last year. Last time we have 70-something, so we're going to have that reduced. I think everybody should be proud of the efforts everyone's put in here, including the media, to promote truce. I think that's going to be a good thing, that we will have less people killed in Baton Rouge. Second, we were going to have the city council allow people to vote whether they wanted more infrastructure. It was almost unanimous. Now, we have the opportunity to come out and vote and fix the infrastructure for our children. Most people here will not enjoy the over the next 10 or 15 years. It's not for you. It's for everyone else to come past you. And what better legacy to leave to your children? They won't have to ask why they call the bridge over here the new bridge and why they call the St. Francisville Bridge the Audubon Bridge, because it ought to have been built in Baton Rouge. And we still will we'll be able to use an interstate for interstate rather than intercity. So these are the things we need to do. And quite frankly, you know, I live in Baton Rouge, we invest money in Baton Rouge, and we could do what we do, invest in companies all over the world. We are the largest private equity company from Houston to Atlanta to Tampa. 
with no economic reason to be here except we'd love this city. Help us improve the city by bringing companies here because if we are not able to invite people to our place, then no one will come. You ask me all the time, Jim, why don't big companies come to Baton Rouge? Why should they? Why should they? What great thing do we have to offer them? I don't hang your head and look bad because guess what? We can improve. We can do better. And it starts with infrastructure. It starts with less murder rate and improving our university. Okay. Thank you, so I'm for it, just in case you need to know. Thank you very much. My message here today is that, is that we need the citizens of Baton Rouge and East Baton Rouge Parish to vote for this important uh, traffic mitigation, infrastructure, and roads program. On the ballot, it will be listed as the Capital Improvements District. We call it Movie BR. It's going to touch every part of this city and of this parish. And what people really need to uh, also focus on is number one no one will be able to use the these tax dollars or this money for any other programs other than what's on the ballot so there will be no tampering with the dollars in future decades to come when I'm not mayor no one can change the plan it has to stay as is that is uh, illegal if someone tries to do it another very very important point is that we have a number of uh, whether they're seniors or non-seniors sometimes people who have medical emergencies or medical needs believe it or not EMS uh, ambulances fire trucks they get stuck in traffic as well and so we have to make sure that a program like this which mitigates traffic also mitigates the propensity for someone to possibly lose their life because of minutes of waiting in traffic. Our seniors don't want that. They want to be able to get uh, to the hospital in an emergency without getting stuck in traffic. And that's very important. Lastly, if we're going to grow, evolve, and move forward as a city and as a parish, we have to improve our roads, our transportation, mobility, and our infrastructure if we are going to see a growth in economic development. So this is the time. We can no longer uh, kick this can down the road. This is our moment in time to change the trajectory of the future of Baton Rouge through Movie BR. You mentioned during your presentation that this would impact the entire parish, not just the city of Baton Rouge. This plan will impact the entire parish. That's why we had the mayors of Baker, Central, and Zachary sign on and publicly endorse the plan as well. Everybody, Baton Rouge, Zachary, Baker, Central, will all be positively impacted by the projects in this plan. And you also mentioned that this could serve as a, 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 a bedrock for maybe a regional approach that could include a new bridge. So, uh, there's been talk about regional initiatives such as a bridge. As mayor president, I support regional initiatives that are proposed. And what is happening with our plan, that's another good, great thing about this plan. It is going to serve as a foundation to build on for other projects to come. For example, there's been talk about a uh, bridge right across the parish uh, or near the parish line of Iberville Parish. Uh, if, if that ends up being the proposed site, the work that we're doing on Highway 30 will serve as a great foundation for that bridge taking place. And the truth of the matter, everything that we're doing in this plan serves as a great foundation for a regional plan. That's another great positive about it. All modern cities have big infrastructure improvements and continue to do them. In, in order to attract young people to work in the city and be a vibrant city, you need great infrastructure and great education. Without that, you're not going to be successful. And we're going to be successful in Baton Rouge. You know, all indications that the overwhelming majority are for this um, way to move forward in our city. So I, I fully expect it to pass and hope everybody gets out and vote. That's the main thing. If this plan were to uh, be approved by the voters on December 8th, what kind of a signal would this send out? 
I think if this plan is approved on December 8th, which I'm asking our citizens to support it, it will send a message far and wide that Baton Rouge is open to do more business, that Baton Rouge is concerned about the quality of life for all of its citizens, and that we are on a road of peace, prosperity, and progress for everyone.